is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. My guest today is Shay Haddo, an expert coach and speaker on confidence and mindset for female athletes. She's the founder of Alpha Girl Confidence, host of the Alpha Girl Confidence podcast, and author of her book, She the Confident. After overcoming her own struggles of self-doubt and lack of confidence in club and collegiate soccer, she knew that it was her life's calling to provide female athletes with the coaching that she wished she once had. Shay is on a mission to empower girl athletes around the world to build unshakable confidence so they can live and play to their fullest potential. Shay, welcome to the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm so happy to be here and talk with you again. Um, yeah, it's, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. When I first came across you, Shay, because we haven't known each other long, but when I first came across you, I was just like, this is my girl. I feel like we have <laughs> like a very similar mission of just empowering other girl athletes. And I know you specifically have a passion for youth athletes as well. And I think we just really do that and express that in, you know, super similar ways, but different, you know, me more so through the nutrition and you more so through the sport and mindset. But I'd love to kind of dig into that with you and and start with your athletic background. I know you were a great soccer player. Can you tell us, you know, when you got into soccer and when sports became a huge part of your life? Yeah. I mean, it became a huge part of my life. I feel like for as long as I can remember, you know, as, as soon as I could, could kick a ball or shoot a basketball, those were my two sports. So grew up playing those my whole life. I was always I, what my parents would call naturally gifted. I was fast. I was, uh, I had the skill. And then when I was 12, I, I tore my ACL. So that's, you know, obviously really young to, to have that type of injury. So I tore my ACL, had surgery at the age of 13. And so that that recovery process, I think that's what really started kind of this mental struggle, this lack of confidence and self-doubt, you know. So obviously the injury itself was was tough mentally and physically, but then getting back on the field was really difficult for me physically as far as not trusting my body, being afraid of getting injured again, and then mentally just feeling like I was so behind my teammates and just, you know, I, I just remember before games, like being so nervous and stepping on the field, like just not having any fun because I just was, was kind of stuck in my own head and and had all these negative thoughts. And, you know, what if I make a mistake? Am I going to get yelled at? And what are people going to think of me? You know, all those things that the teenage girls think about. So that's what really started my lack of confidence. And then, you know, I, I almost quit at the age of 15, I remember before practice thinking like, man, I just, I just don't love this anymore. It, it felt like a chore to me, but I wanted to play college soccer. Like that was always my dream. And so luckily, like I stuck with it. I ended up getting recruited to play at Virginia Commonwealth University. And then I, I transferred back to my home state, uh, Utah State for, to finish out my, my last three years. But even in college, my confidence was up and down. I couldn't really get a grasp on how to become more confident. So it wasn't until like my junior year was, was absolutely awful. Uh, I, I got hurt again, which was, it was a really easy surgery. But I lost my starting spot and I was in a bad mental headspace. I was constantly blaming other people for my lack of success and for my lack of playing time. And I just, I just wasn't a good teammate, to be honest. And then right before senior year, I was like, all right, Shay, like you got one more year. This is like, I'm not going to play after this. So you got one more year to, to figure it out. So that, that off season, I, I really took responsibility physically, you know, trained hard and then also started learning a bit about sports psychology and confidence and visualization, all that kind of stuff, which I attribute 
largely, you know, to my success, my senior year had a great senior year. So I ended on a high note, but yeah, my whole career was, was kind of a confidence roller coaster. And, but that's why I do what I do so that other girls, you know, don't have to go through that alone. And, you know, so they had, can have a mentor to kind of help them through that, that tough time. For sure. So yeah, starting at 12 years old with kind of feeling with that injury and having that shake your confidence and really not learning the skills until you were a junior going into senior year of college. So I mean, nearly a decade. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, and I can't remember if we talked about this already or not, but like when we were, when we were playing, right. Mental health and and mental performance, it wasn't really a thing, right? Like I had never heard about it. I, and I struggled with anxiety as well. And like all of that stuff, I just, I just didn't ask for help. I just didn't know how to ask for help. I didn't even know what it was. So like, it was just something that it was kind of like, I kind of buried deep at that age. And, you know, it wasn't until later that I figured out like, Hey, this is this is, you know, not something that only I struggle with. And that's what I really want to do now is like so many girls still believe that they're the only ones struggling with it. So, you know, just bringing awareness to the fact that like, hey, it's okay. Like you're not alone. Absolutely. And I think it's two sides of it. It's it's one, have the confidence so that you can stay in sports and, you know, achieve your dream. And also like probably just have fun while you're doing it and enjoy the moments you have. I would love to know your feedback on, you know, when you said you were 15 and you almost quit because you just weren't enjoying it. And I don't think there's a right answer, but I was just, I'm interested in, in your opinion, your feedback on like, if you're not enjoying a sport anymore, you're not having fun, like, should you stay in it and figure out a way? Or is it okay to just say, you know what, this isn't for me anymore? Yeah. I mean, like if you've, you know, dedicated your whole life to it, it's kind of hard to just walk away. So, I mean, what I would do is I would really like sit down and like, like kind of reflect on, well, why do I, why do I play this sport in the first place? Right. So figure out what your why is and then figure out, well, what, what is it about right now that, that I'm not enjoying it? Why am I not enjoying it right now? Right. And then maybe once you, once you come to those conclusions and reflect a little bit, maybe there's something you can change to start enjoying it more. Right. And, and if, if that's the case, then that's awesome. I don't believe that you should just quit without kind of having some sort of reflection unless you know in your heart for sure it's not for you. But also on the other side, if you figure out, Hey, this isn't for me, I am all for like, I would never encourage anyone to stay in the sport that they don't love anymore. Right. Like I know a lot of even my teammates in college, some of them play just just because they got a scholarship. They didn't love the sport and they didn't last their four years because it's really hard to play at that level when you don't love it. Right. So I would just say, like, see if you can figure out why you're feeling that way first. If there's a solution to that, great. And if not, you got to really, you know, it's a hard decision to make, but sometimes quitting could be the right decision if it's not, you know, giving you joy or anymore or even negatively affecting your mental health. Yeah. And I, I love what you said too, just, you know, give it some good deep thought and reflection. You know, it's not that, you know, if you do ch- decide to quit, if that's the right decision for you, great, but don't jump to that conclusion so soon. I think you have a statistic on your website that says 32% of all girls who quit sports do so because of lack of self-confidence. And that's where it's like, well, wait a second. If we're quitting a sport just because it's not for me anymore, I don't love it, that's fine. But if it's stemming from this lack of confidence, well, that's something that you can improve and work on. And not only is gonna that going to help you stay in sport, but that's going to help you with everything in life to have more confidence. I know. And I, and I feel like, too, I don't know what the other reasons are, I guess. I mean, But like, I think for girls too, it's a lot of like the social aspect, like dealing with mean girls and dealing with, with coaches that that don't support. And those can all relate to lack of confidence. But yeah, just like you said, if, if it is lack of confidence, there are ways to, to fix that and improve that so that you do fall back in love with the sport, you know? So it's definitely taking a look at that because we, we go through phases and especially I feel like as women, we go through phases where where our moods change. And like, for example, last week, I'll be honest, like last week I was 
feeling like I was getting burnt out with what I was doing a little bit, just because I was like, you know, I was working so hard and I wasn't taking the time for me. And then now this week I'm like, oh, I'm good. Like, I love this. Like, I just think, and it was right before my menstrual cycle. Right. So I think as women too, we have these phases where it's like our moods kind of dip and, and stuff like that happens. So it's like, don't make any crazy decisions before like reflecting and figuring out what's really going on. Mm -hmm. For sure. And your comment about like dealing with mean girls on a team, it reminded me of one of your podcast episodes, which I just want to highlight and give a shout out to right now because I listen to it. (laughs) I really enjoy it. It's called Alpha Girl Confidence. And what you do a really great job at on on your podcast, and I'm sure for, of course, your clients is giving like actionable tips. You know, you have things like four steps to stop procrastinating, or, you know, I might get it wrong, but it was like six steps to deal with mean girls on your team. And it's really, you know, giving you actionable steps with these things that I think we all experience being on a team, being an athlete, how to build your confidence, how to overcome these struggles, how to overcome that, that week that you're just feeling off, you said. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all about action, you know, like I, I I love planning and I love thinking and I love reflecting, but that only gets you so far, right? And and learning without action only gets you so far. So that's why I'm like everything like in my book and like everything I teach, there's always going to be some sort of action because a lot of time action is what gets you out of anxiety and action is what gets you out of overthinking which we all struggle with, right? For sure. So I want to go back to your experiences as a college athlete and a college soccer player, because you mentioned you had a really good senior season. And when it comes to lack of confidence, you know, for freshman, sophomore, junior year, you know, what, how did that really affect you or what did it look like? You know, was it just your confidence on the field or, you know, how did that affect you as a student athlete? Yeah. So freshman, sophomore, junior, I mean, so really junior year was, was, I would say the worst freshman and sophomore wasn't anything bad, but it just, I, I just, the way I can best put it into words when I played is number one, it was inconsistent. Some days would be great. Some days would be horrible. You know, just the consistency was all over the place. And then the other thing is like, I felt like I w- was trapped when I was playing. Like I, I felt like I couldn't fully just like let go and play, right? Like I was kind of stuck in my own head and it was more so like that in club, but even in college, I just felt like there was something kind of keeping me stuck and not really playing like, like, you know, the beast that I could have been. Right. And then off the field, I mean, my, my confidence affected me off the field. I would say more so like my middle school, obviously middle school is hard for anybody. Right. But more so like my middle school years, but it definitely started like in college. I I remember like I was always kind of a freshman and sophomore year. I was always kind of the kid that that would keep to myself and wouldn't. I would stay like be friends with my team, but I would never like venture out and be friends with the gymnasts or or the basketball team or anything like that. I just think that there was some kind of deep rooted confidence issues just in myself. And I think it relates to kind of the social anxiety, I guess I would say I had, but then junior year, senior year, as far as off the field, it got a lot better. I started like, like putting myself out there. I started making more friends. I started, you know, like making friends outside of just my soccer team. Cause when you grow up playing sports your whole life, you have friends that are basically given to you right? Like you don't have to go, you don't have to go try and make friends. They're just given to you. So it wasn't until then that I developed more confidence socially and was able to like make friends outside of just like my little circle. And those are like some of the best relationships I had. And like, you know, those last two years socially was awesome for me. Yeah. And that's also really important because a lot of people struggle with the transition from college to then just being an adult. Well, for many reasons, but one of them is the social aspect, which is kind of like your whole life you have built in friends, you know, but now you actually have to go do it. So it's great that um, by junior, senior year, you started, you know, figuring that out on your own. And of course, what a transformation, because here you are now, like with your own business, talking to clients all the time, doing Facebook lives, having a podcast. Like, I don't think that social confidence is a concern at all for you anymore. (laughs) <laughs> no, not, not so much. It's still like some of like, this isn't necessarily out of my comfort zone. Some of the stuff I do like that is still definitely out of my comfort zone. But it's yeah, when I first started, though, oh, my gosh, like, I was so nervous about doing stuff like this. It was totally out of my comfort zone, talking to a parent on the phone, doing a podcast, doing a video. 
but it just, it just takes practice. Right. And the more you do it, the more it becomes your comfort zone. And then it's just about finding more things out of your comfort zone to help you to continue to grow and grow that confidence. Right. And like you've already said, like, it's all about taking action. We're not born confident. We have to overcome our weak spots, take action, challenge ourselves, and then you can gain confidence and grow confidence and become confident. Yeah. And it's something too with confidence. I think sometimes there's a misconception that like once you're confident, you're always confident and you you like don't have to work on it. Right. It's just like just like working out. Like if you don't, if you don't work on it, you're gonna lose your muscle. Right. It's kind of the same thing that it's something that always needs to be cultivated, something that I work on every day. The things that I teach, I do those things every single day too. Cause if I don't, then my confidence or my you know, mental performance in my work is going to take a dip, right? So it's something that always needs to be worked on, just like nutrition and working out and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. That's exactly where my mind went. Like, yeah, if I was eating well for my body 10 years ago, but I'm not now, like, then it's not helping. You know, this is a daily practice of mindset, confidence, nutrition, fueling, training. And and not to make that seem overwhelming, it just means that you're continually growing and improving. And it is a daily thing. I'd love to tap into your nutrition a bit more, which I know I've, you know, we've talked a lot and I've talked about nutrition, but I don't know if you have any nutrition stories to share as a college athlete or, or maybe even throughout your times of injury. Um, I guess I'll just ask you this basic question. Like, did nutrition ever play a role for you? Was it ever on your mind as an athlete? It, I, I don't think it was. I don't think I, I, there wasn't resources out there that I knew of. So, okay, we'll go into a little story time with my nutrition story. So when I was, okay, so before I got injured, I was like really lean, like this just like stick of a little kid, right? 12 years old, just this little stick. And then when I got injured and I ate a ton before that, like my metabolism, which is crazy. But when I got injured, obviously, right, I couldn't work out and I kept eating a lot. And I I put on some some pounds. You could see in old pictures. My I got some look at my brother as used to say, it looks like I got muffins in my cheeks. <laughs> and so I was I was like putting on a little bit of weight and stuff like that. And then it, I wouldn't say that I struggled with weight, but there was a time where my body image wasn't very great just because I, I didn't know like how to control my eating and what I should eat. And it, it just wasn't something that, that was talked about with, with coaches and my parents. We didn't, we didn't really talk about it. So I didn't know what to eat. All I knew was to not drink soda, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't drink soda. That's the only thing. But then in college, I ate like a college kid right? Top ramen, macaroni and cheese, combine the two. Like we, you know, chili mac, like those were our our staples, right? Spam and rice. Like those were the kinds of things we ate all the time. And in college too, I was one of those, I, my body image was not good in college either. Like I remember in the locker room from middle school to college, I would always go into the bathroom to change and everybody else would be out of the bathroom to change, right? They would just, you know, change their jerseys, such and such. But I was self-conscious about that I didn't have a six-pack like the rest of my teammates, right? And so, and like uh, my legs weren't jacked like my teammates and that kind of thing. And I didn't start learning about nutrition. Like I took nutrition classes in college, but I don't think I actually took it seriously until I was done like being an athlete because I felt like, okay, now that I'm not an athlete, if I don't work on my nutrition, I'm going to you know, have this be a struggle my entire life. So yeah. And I know that if I would have had somebody like you when I was an athlete, my performance would have been so much better. My confidence would have been so much better. My body image would have been so much better. And I know now like colleges pay more attention to that kind of stuff. But at the time, like, I don't know, like our strength coaches, they they didn't really talk to us about nutrition a whole lot. So it wasn't, wasn't like kind of something that was really prioritized. Yeah. Yeah. Good story, Shay. <laughs> Lots <laughs> came up there. And yeah, I people always find it shocking. People I talk to now that like nutrition is kind of still like a new thing and a new science, but it really is, you know, even just, you know, 10, 15 years ago, like we didn't, it wasn't incorporated into sport culture very much. And so, you know, the good news is there's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. And I've talked to you about this before. It's like, yeah, as, as a teen or college athlete, had you had 
good nutrition advice that really could have elevated your performance, improved your body image, and that would have been key. So I wish you had that. It's also interesting because what I also see nowadays with some of our really young athletes that we put too much emphasis on nutrition. I have some young athletes that are eating, you know, kale salads. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even know what kale was when I was your age. But with that being said, I'm like, wait, no, you just need a PB and J sandwich. You know, like you need more energy than a kale salad to get you through, you know, this run or this practice or this game. And so it's really the shift that we've had over the past 10, 15 years, I, I think is a positive one because like you said, you know, maybe ramen living off of ramen <laughs> wasn't going to be the best performance nutrition diet for a college athlete. And you also had those time periods of I'm injured and now I don't know what to do. And this, this is another important thing that I talk about often, Shay, is like, it is okay as an athlete if you gain weight during a time of injury. Like that's okay. And there's no reason to, you know, freak out or do anything about it. But what you said too, if it just shook your confidence and then you didn't know what to do about it. And that's where I think having some nutrition knowledge, just understand like, yeah, you know what? It is okay if I gain a little weight because I'm not training at the same level, but like, this is how I can still put good nourishment in my body to help me recover and heal and be ready to step back on the field. Yeah. Like I remember too, like after, so high, high school season, right? We would go straight from school, go to the friend's house real quick, grab a snack and go to practice. But our snack, and you're going to die when you hear this. Our snack was, you know, those little cosmic brownies. Oh, yes. I love those. I love those too. But it was that, maybe a bag of Cheetos and a Capri Sun. That was our pre-practice snack. Like, and I love those too, but I'm like, like not good, right? Yeah. yeah. So delicious. Not the best performance fuel for right before going into practice. Like that's something for, you know, your treat to enjoy after practice or whatever. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Capri Suns and Cosmic Brownies. That's the go-to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you mentioned too that, you know, well, post, because I'm sure you're you're still very athletic. You're not competing anymore. So what has your personal nutrition looked like transitioning more into like post- I guess we can just call it more former athlete life. It's it's kind of been all over the place. As I, I as we know, nutrition, there's you can look at one thing, it'll tell you to go paleo, another thing, keto, another thing, vegan, right? So I've been doing like trying to figure out like what works for my body. You know what I mean? And so for me, I've been trying to as much as possible is like look at ingredients to things. And if it's got a bunch of processed stuff, try not to eat it. I've been like adding way, way, way more vegetables than I ever have before, which I think has has been extremely helpful. So adding a lot more vegetables and then just trying to to lessen like all of the processed stuff. And I have the biggest sweet tooth in the world. Like I would say that's my biggest weakness. So like for me, it's been like, okay, I'm, I'm not totally going to give this up, but can I substitute a Reese's peanut butter cup for a piece of of dark chocolate or something like that. So trying to make like these little tweaks in my nutrition has definitely helped. And I'm, I'm really happy with, with my body and everything right now. And so I think for me, it's still something that I'm trying to learn about and trying to figure out like what's best for my health, my, my mind gut connection and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up, the mind gut connection, because they're, you know, and, and this is where I think confidence and nutrition can overlap so much. It's feeling good in your body, feeling good about your body. And then even like from that physiological level, like there is a brain gut connection, our gut microbiome affecting our, our brain health and vice versa can be a little bit quite confusing sometimes (laughs) actually. So I guess what, what I'm proud to hear you saying for yourself too, is like those little tweaks with your nutrition. And I'm sure that with confidence and mindset coaching, you feel the same way too. Like we're not going to go overnight from, you know, anxiety, depression, lack of confidence to, you know, I'm on top of the world. It's those little, little tweaks and little steps that you can take to make an improvement in your life day to day and then see the impact over time. Yeah. And actually I'm reading this book right now. I can't remember the name of it. It's kind of a weird title, but he was talking about mental health and physical health. And he was saying, and this goes right along with what we're talking about is that that in order to have a healthy mind, you have to first have a healthy body, 
right? And we can all attest to that. If we're physically sick, it's like our mind isn't where it needs to be. And so I think getting the nutrition right and and getting your physical body right is going to make it easier for you to be confident and for you to, you know, have the growth mindset and all that kind of stuff. For sure. And just speaking of personal experience too, for me, like a day that I train, and this isn't like I take rest days and recovery days and that's good, but a day that I train, I am more mentally like on my game and I'm thinking clearer and I'm happier. And so aside from, you know, what is my weight or how much muscle do I have and all that, but like, no, just getting out there and being active and training and competing is such this boost in my happiness. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Shay, I was wondering if you could spend just a few moments telling our listeners a little bit more about exactly what you do, empowering female athletes to be more confident. If you want to share some information about you know, your coaching and your services, we would love to hear. So if anybody's listening that kind of is really interested in what you do or could need your help that they can know, you know, how you could help them. Absolutely. Yeah. So primarily I work with girls age about 10 to 17. And I do that primarily in my my signature group coaching program, which is called the Alpha Girl Confidence Mentorship. So that mentorship, it's it's really cool. We've got a, a solid group of girls. Right now it's mostly soccer players, but we do have a few other like basketball players, softball players, stuff like that. But it's really cool because my favorite part about that, so obviously I love, I love coaching and I love, you know, giving the confidence tips and all that. But what's really cool and what's really powerful that I didn't even know would be a thing with this is that all of the girls are like becoming their own, like not their own coaches, but other girls coaches as well. So when we we have a topic discussion, it's really cool because number one, the girls realize that, hey, I'm not the only one struggling with this. And number two, it's not only am I coaching the girls, but it's like, you know, Sarah, well, I don't even have a Sarah, so I'm using fake names here, <laughs> but like Sarah will help Jenny with a question that she has because she doesn't know how to deal with mean girls, but Sarah has dealt with mean girls. So it's this really cool dynamic we've got going on. And then I also have a course called the Alpha Girl Confidence Accelerator. So it's an online course, five modules, all about confidence, mindset, goal setting, like all of kind of the mental life skills that are associated with the sport, but also, you know, with with life after the sport, which is kind of my my main goal is obviously to help these players become better players, more confident players. But even more than that, for me, it's about helping them to become confident women in their careers and in their, you know, in their life after sport. Um, so those are what my programs look like. And then also, I have this really cool new, it's about two, three months old, but it's called the Daily Confidence. And it's a text membership where every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I send out like confidence tips and motivation strategies and stuff like that to to their phones. And so it's a really cool like little way for them to kind of get that dose of motivation and a dose of confidence every morning for them to start their day, which is really cool to to see kind of the results and stuff of that. Yeah, I love that. How cool. So you've got you've got those modules for people who want to, you know, just get the the knowledge information, start taking action on their own. And then with your one-on-one coaching and kind of group aspect, you know, I see the same thing with all of my clients. We have a a uh, group aspect and and I call it a team aspect. You know, you and me understand coming from that athletic background. It's like traditionally we have our sports team and we have our coach and we have our teammates. Well, like you can have your confidence team, you can have your nutrition team, and everybody's here to lift each other up. And it is so powerful when a group of female athletes like get in the room together and support each other and coach each other and guide each other. And it's really, really powerful. And that's amazing that you are starting implementing that with athletes at such a young age. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's really cool. Cause I'll, I'll ask the girls like, Hey, what did you like about the call today? Or, you know, get, I'll, I'll get, I'll get feedback from them. And almost every time the thing they say, isn't like, Oh, I loved your tips, but it's like, I love that I'm able to give feedback to other girls. And I love that I get feedback from other girls. So it's a really powerful community. And like I said, I didn't know that it would come to what it has become, but it's, it's been really cool to just kind of, like you said, build that, that team. And it really is like that team environment, which I love. Yeah. It's so cool. I also want to ask you kind of a curveball question. Well, I guess it's not a curveball, but I'm ready. 
(laughs) (laughs) Your, your brand and your podcast name is alpha girl confidence. So I wanted to know what does being an alpha girl mean to you? Yeah. So a little backstory. So before it was alpha girl confidence, when I first started my business, it was a technical training soccer business. It was called Alpha Girl Soccer Academy. So I did camps, clinics, one-on-one training. And then when I pivoted uh, last year, I was like, well, I want to keep the brand Alpha Girl because I just I just love it. And so I like I want to keep the brand Alpha Girl. And then I'm like, let's just take out the soccer at the word confidence. So that's, I guess, how the brand name came to be. But for me, when I first was thinking of the name Alpha Girl, I wanted the the brand name to be something that that you knew that it was for girls, right? And also something where you knew that it was about empowerment and being being powerful and being confident. And so for me, like I don't know the technical definition definition of alpha, but for me, it's about the the girl and the woman that is willing to step into her own power that is willing to, you know, speak out and and just be confident in who she is. So that's what it means for me. I love it. It's beautiful. And, and the reason I wanted to bring it up too is because I feel like most people hear the word alpha for alpha male. He's an alpha male or a beta male. And it's like, but then just what women are just women, girls are just, <laughs> no. I don't know. Like, and I mean, it's silly to even try and classify like, you know, men like that even, but it's, it is empowering when you flip it and you say, wait, how can I be an alpha girl? How can I be a girl that steps up with confidence and, and, you know, is the one speaking or the one going after things. And and so I, I love it. I resonate with it. I think it's awesome. And thank you. It's very cool. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. When I, when I started, I was like, man, I, I hope this sticks, you know, I was coming up with you know, the, the beginning process of starting a business, trying to come up with a, a cool name. And so I was, I was glad that it actually stuck and now it's kind of become its own kind of person, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So I have a few other fun questions to ask you things. I ask all my guests at the end of our podcast, kind of rapid fire questions. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right. If there was one food that you could eat every single day for the rest of your life and never get sick of it, what would it be? I would have to say a Euro. Oh, so good. I love Greek style food. With a nice warm pita, some lamb. Oh, yes. Some tzatziki sauce. Yeah, that's my jam. So good. I love it too. All right. And then uh, what is your favorite sport to play? I'm guessing soccer, but you never know. Soccer, basketball would be a tie. But actually, if I could go back, I would probably play football. Really? Yeah. I love football. Yeah. Awesome. It it is funny sometimes how – what our favorite sport is to play, like might be a little bit different than what we ended up doing. Cause it, like, you know, what we ended up doing is what we were really good at, but maybe we really enjoy something else. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now it's not soccer. Now it's probably uh, pickleball or tennis, <laughs> but I, but I love all sports. So that's kind of a hard one. Yeah. What about as a spectator? Is there a different sport that you really enjoy watching? Football and basketball. Yeah. Awesome. And then Shay, if there is a female athlete, whether in your personal life or just, or a famous female athlete that really inspires you, I was wondering if you wanted to give them a shout out who that is and why. Well, I'm going to go way back to my playing days and definitely Mia Hamm. So Mia Hamm, if you're listening, shout out to Mia Hamm. I don't know if Mia Hamm listens to your show, but no, I mean, I don't know, but I'd love to find out. (laughs) But no, like growing up as a as a soccer player, like, you know, when in 1999, when the World Cup happened and all that, it just really ignited this fire inside of me where I knew that if I obviously I didn't make it to be a pro player, but like that was what ignited me and and working so hard and, and really believing that, hey, like this is possible for women too. So I would say Mia Hamm and just that whole like 99 World Cup team was was really instrumental in my my career as, as a youth player. Yeah, Mia Hamm is definitely going to go down in the books as a very inspiring female athlete. Yeah. Well, Shay, this was a great conversation. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. And I will include links to everything in the show notes, but if you want to tell our listeners really quick where they can find you and, or how they could reach out to you. Yeah. So you can find me on my website at alphagirlconfidence.com. And then Instagram is Shay Hatto and Twitter is Shay Hatto. So any of those places is a good spot. 
Thank you so much, Shay. It was a pleasure talking. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was awesome. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and thanks for listening. But before I let you go, I have free resources that you can have access to right away, right now, so that you can start fueling your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. First, I have your Red S recovery race. If you've ever wondered if you might be struggling with Red S, curious to learn more, or know you have Red S and are looking to recover fast, then you can head to www.riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S and download the red S recovery race. See how you place and figure out the next steps to recovery. Plus while there, I have a few other great resources for you, including three nutrition secrets that every elite athlete swears by and access to a private Facebook community, female athlete nutrition. So again, to gain access to all of this, head to riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S that's backslash R E D S. And you can gain access and get the help you need fast. Too many girls and women and female athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer become fierce, fit and fueled links in the show notes, and I'll see you next time.